Good morning, I'm Mark Allen with Gaper, and I'm here today with Michael Rubin, the CFO of Magic. Good uh, afternoon in your case, Michael, how you doing? Good, good morning to you, Mark. Thank you, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. That's Happy great. To be here. So can you share a brief background of yourself and your work experience? Yeah, so I, I have somewhat of an interesting work experience. Um, I've never really held a real job. Uh, <laughs> kind of graduated college and tried not to get a job and started um, a couple small internet companies with the help of some college friends. And over time, we kind of, we, we split up directly after college and then kind of came back together and started um, living and working together, kind of selling web hosting on the internet, doing a couple different affiliate businesses. And after a number of years of doing that, we decided to move to the Bay Area and start like a real startup. Mm -hmm. um, and we spent a number of years researching what to do, um, trying a bunch of different ideas. Uh, we eventually got into Y Combinator with a, uh, an idea that is very far from what Magic is today. It, it started as a blood pressure monitoring and management company. And we actually got into Y Combinator with that idea and in Y Combinator, um, that idea pivoted to what is closer to where magic is today. So a lot of my professional life has been, um, as an, all of it's been as an entrepreneur and a lot of it has been at magic. I'm a co-founder of the company and, and the CFO. And you said you haven't really had a real job. I would call CFO a real job. But. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is a real employee job, but you know, I know. It's a special position. Yeah. So. So what has been your experience with remote employment? Um, it sounds like a lot, uh, both as an employee, well, actually you probably weren't an employee, but as an employer. Yeah, yeah. So we've had really good experiences with remote employment. Um, when Magic started, um, it was all in office. We had everybody in one small cramped office for a long time. And as we grew our, our operational base, which at that time was out of Mountain View, um, we had to find larger and larger offices and um, about a year into Magic's life, uh, lifespan, we decided to open a second office in the Philippines. And we moved a lot of our, um, we moved our entire operational base out there and that's really become our headquarters. We have a, a number of uh, employees that, have, that are living there full time and working out of there. And that was kind of the beginning of a slow move towards remote, which has really just delivered more and more benefits as we've invested and, and moved further in that direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and I've dealt with uh, people from the Philippines and they are, they, their English is very good and they're very hardworking. I do know that. Yeah. So I, yeah. I can see why you did that. Um, what do you think is the, the future of remote employment? Um, and what do you think can be done differently to make it um, more effective? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there are a lot of benefits to going remote and there's a lot of people that can benefit from working at a remote company. And certainly the whole situation with COVID has probably accelerated that trend maybe by five or 10 years. We see mm -hmm. a lot of people are more and more open to remote. Um, one, of the, one of the most interesting trends we've noticed at Magic is you know, our, one of our big focuses is offering services to businesses, um, kind of augmenting their current labor force. And one of the big objections we used to see was well, I want people in my office and I don't know, it's this remote thing. And now that everybody's remote, we don't see that objection anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so that being said, there are definitely downsides to remote. And I don't think, I, I can't imagine a world where everybody is 100% remote. I think there's a lot of um, people that want to be in office and benefit from that constant one-on-one, um, -on -one, uh, you know, one-to-many interpersonal um, interactions, but I can imagine a world where there's a lot more remote in it. Um, yeah, no, I agree. And, and I since you have spent time in the Bay Area. I can tell you since everyone's gone remote, the traffic is so much better here. <laughs> yeah, that's been amazing. I mean, uh, I've enjoyed my bike rides a lot more. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Actually, if you're familiar with the San Mateo Bridge, it, there's no longer a backup on the San Mateo Bridge in the afternoon. Wow. Or in the morning. Perfect. Yeah. So what is the story behind Magic? We've talked about it a little bit, but what is yeah. what do you actually do and who is your target audience? Yeah, so at, at the base level, we're a task fulfillment engine for um, you know, busy business leaders. And um, 
really doing things on the operational side of the company. So, you know, we help with sales, um, we help with uh, general administrative tasks, um, recruiting, customer service, anywhere there's, there's gaps in your labor force. Um, we can fill those gaps places where you're getting a sudden influx and need to bring people on board really quickly. We can come in there and really take over um, business processes and run those remotely um, at a high quality for, for a low price. Hmm. So basically operations, back office yeah. operations, right? Yeah. Yeah, interesting. So um, how did you incorporate the idea of remote at your company? I mean, I, I assume you started out as two different offices, correct? But how did, you, how did that evolve? Yeah, so the move to the Philippines was the initial spark there. Uh, and actually, I was a big champion within the company because at the time, I was living in San Jose and we had an office in San Francisco and I was on the train for like four hours a day. Mm. And so I was starting to push, you know, maybe I could stay at home a few days a week and not waste all this time on the train. Um, but really what happened was we would have meetings at weird times and we'd need to be collaborating um, across, um, you know, large, uh, large expanses. And it slowly made more and more sense that people would start moving remote. And when, when it became clear that this was a trend and we wanted to lean into it, one of the first things we did was quickly switch the company to be a remote first company. So mm. while people could still be in the office, we wanted to make sure that all of our meetings um, were remote first meetings, meaning that there weren't you know, a, a couple people in a conference room and then a couple people called in because what you see there is the people that call in inevitably they're like the second class citizens of the meeting that's hard to speak up. So yeah. if there's a meeting and, and there's remote people, everybody is, you know, at their desk on, we, we actually use Google Meet, which I think makes us um, a little rarer than everybody's on Zoom mm -hmm. these days. But, uh, you know, everybody's on, on their Google Meet in their, in their office. Um, and so, um, we were able to bring people onto the same level so that if you wanted to be more remote, you could do that. Um, but at the time there wasn't a, uh, a requirement that you go remote. And then slowly over time, everybody that was in the US in our San Francisco office went more and more remote to the point that we were able to close down that office. And then hmm. slowly people in our Philippines office um, that at least weren't involved in the fulfillment uh, they started going remote as well. Um, and it just, it organically spread uh, kind of that way. So what percent of your workforce now is remote, would you say? So we're now 100% remote. Oh. Uh, the COVID accelerated that. We, we were basically, we were close to being 100% remote beforehand. So it wasn't a big shift like I've seen at a lot of other companies. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was like the final nail in the coffin around mm -hmm. having an office. And do you, you foresee you'll be closing down the office in the Philippines? Yeah, we have. Oh, you already have. So, and yeah. so you're not, you're hundred percent remote. You're not going back. Yeah, exactly. So you're just like Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> They've already announced it too. <laughs> yeah. Well, when well, that brings up the, the pandemic uh, forced every company to go remote pretty much, you know, for the most part uh, back in March, um, mm -hmm. which including yourself, did that cause any roadblocks or challenges that you didn't expect? Not really. Like, you know, like I said, we were 90% of the way there when it hit. And so we just kind of did the next 10%. Um, actually, completely incidental to that pandemic, there was a, I think there was a tuberculosis scare in our building about a month before the pandemic wow. that pushed us to 100% remote right beforehand. Um, so we hit those last challenges and it was just simple things like, you know, people not having computers at home and needing to work out our, our computer rental arrangement to send those things home um, and putting new practices in place that helped teams work together better. Just those final things actually came in place right before the pandemic. So the pandemic itself was almost non-disruptive to our company in terms of people going remote. Wow, that's impressive because that not every company can say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've had it relatively easy in that regard. Yes. So, I mean, we're in a similar industry. There's companies like Gaper and companies like yourself. We, we basically do the same thing, uh, just from a different angle. 
you know, we help build and scale products, especially for startups. You help startups and other companies do the same thing, but on the back end side, right? Yep. So on the operational end. Yeah. So how important do you think? I mean, obviously you must think this is important since you're doing it. Um, where do you mm -hmm. see, see this going in the future? Yeah, I, I think that now, now that more and more companies are going remote, I think it's so much easier for them to embrace services like Gaper and like Magic. Um, the, like I said, the large difference of, well, I want someone in an office, I want to be able to watch them working. How do I know they're producing results? A lot of companies are getting over those roadblocks ahead of time. So we're not running into those objections to the service. And so plugging into a service like a magic or like a gaper, you can start to get a lot of the benefits without um, a lot of the downsides that you used to have of, well, it's weird to plug this remote for workforce into my company. Now it's just like any other employee that might be working there. So it's, yeah. a, it's a much simpler onboarding uh, to get a lot of the benefits that you can offer around, you know, like scalability and quality and reliability and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, no, I agree. I think um, I think this model is is going to be here for a while. <laughs> yeah, I, I think we're in an interesting spot in the market, and you know, we're we're optimistic about the future. Yeah, I, I've talked to a number of CEOs that um, before COVID said no way, and now they're mm -hmm. like, you know what? This right. isn't so bad, and and you know we don't have the cost of an office now, which is yeah. a big savings for a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. So, well, Michael, I want to thank you for your time today. It's been uh, great talking to you. Um, basically, in in similar industries, so we have a lot of uh, synergies there. And I want to wish you a great day. Yeah, it was great to talk, Mark. All right, All right. talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye.